What is the goal of lifting? Is it to become stronger, faster, more athletic? To me, none of that matters. The only thing I think of when pumping iron is this. I want to become a beast. I want to turn my body into a wall of muscles and be as imposing as possible by packing on as much lean mass as possible. The type of training I'll be reviewing today doesn't necessarily align with this mentality, but it certainly produces similar results. When talking about pro athletes' workouts, there's a lot that leaves to be desired when it comes to building muscle, and that's normal. Their aim is to become more proficient at their sport. While this sometimes means having to do some resistance training to build mass, the bulk of the training remains very sport-specific and more tailored towards technique. Pro wrestling is no exception. Being able to pick up and slam opponents perfectly, learning how to break a fall and developing the necessary skills to perform in a professional ring is the work of a lifetime. This is an aspect of the sport that is often underappreciated by non-fans, but fear not. I will be making a full video about the awesomeness of pro wrestling and how Grappler Baki and Kengen Ashura convey all of the love their authors carry for this art. However, there is something about pro wrestlers that is drastically different from other athletes. The fact that they use their bodies not only as a tool to perform, but also as an artifact to entertain the public with. Sure, getting bigger is an absolute prerequisite for getting stronger and being able to wrestle in the first place, but a large portion of that is also cosmetic. In short, pro wrestlers are buff, and this is what I want to focus on today. Would the training of a pro wrestler like Seki Bayashi from Kengen Ashura work in real life? And could you make gains from it? Even though he will be getting a full muscle manga episode, I find it necessary to quickly sum up who Seki Bayashi is for the non-initiated. In short, he is a Kengen Ashura character who uses pro wrestling to compete in real hand-to-hand -hand fights with no holds barred. This is already quite the predicament, considering that most people think the sport is fake and therefore completely useless in combat, but that's something I'll tackle another day. The part that is for interest to us here is that he started training at 15, as a total runt that had never lost a fight in his life. At this point, he had no real experience to speak of, being young and without practice in the world of martial arts or sports. He was just a punk with a tremendous amount of confidence and a bad attitude. After picking a fight with the chairman, he got his ass ended to him and got a first taste of defeat. This is incredibly important from a psychological standpoint, and since spirit is 50% of the training, it is worth mentioning here. The drive and motivation to start working out needs to come from somewhere, and for a lot of young men, it will be from past humiliations, feeling of helplessness or pressure from the environment, that is forcing you to evolve or die. For Sekibayashi, it was the dishonor of having lost for the first time in his life, and the curiosity of learning more about the martial art that took him down and could potentially help him get stronger. We see that he was already quite muscular at his age, but I'm going to ignore that. This is the typical trope of anime teens being jacked out of their minds with no prior training, and since the entire King and Ashura manga keeps it up all throughout the story by showcasing physiques that are absolutely unreachable for natural lifters, it doesn't make that big of a difference here. We're just going to pretend that both of Sekibayashi's forms, before and after the training, are brought down to size and modeled after a more realistic standard. This is an important disclaimer considering how big Sekibayashi is during Kengen Ashura. At 38 years old, he weighs a staggering 311 pounds, standing at 6 feet 5. Realistically, someone that tall would probably be able to weight around 280 pound tops, if they only focused on hypertrophy and wanted to showcase somewhat of a lean physique. Mr. Pro Wrestling over here weighs 30 pounds more than that, while looking shredded, so any sort of meaningful comparison between reality and fiction sort of goes out of the window here. The fact that the numbers don't really add up doesn't stop this example from being relevant. First off, it is interesting to see that he seems to have reached his prime in his late 30s, which is going to be true for a lot of taller lifters who will need a lot more time to fulfill their potential, because of the amount of real estate they have to fill out. Secondly, he got there via pro wrestling training only, and we can therefore attribute all of his hypertrophy gains to the very regimen that goes as follows. 10,000 Hindu squats. 200 reps of 5 meter rope climbing, 1 hour neck bridge, and 3 sets of 1000 push ups each. This is basically Saitama's training, but mega dosed on boar shark hormones. If you've watched any of the Hypertrophy series episode, you already know what my assessment of this training will be. 
it's ridiculous and for so many reasons. First off, no novice could handle that amount of volume without breaking. Secondly, even if they could, they would never be able to do it again the next day. Thirdly, if they had that recovery ability in the first place, then having them do sets of 10,000 squats or 1,000 push-ups would just mean that they're way too strong for these exercises and that their baseline isn't even challenged by it, which means that their muscles wouldn't need to adapt and grow bigger as a response to it. That's the answer I'd give you if I wanted to be a stickler, but instead I'm just going to roll with it and pretend that this training is doable, because if it was, it would indeed develop a solid physique. The push-ups would blow up the delts, chest and triceps, while the rope climbing would take care of the biceps, forearms and upper back, with an extra little bit of yoke thanks to the neck bridges. While bodyweight squats wouldn't really be enough to grow the legs and posture chain significantly, this doesn't matter much considering that pro wrestlers tend to not have the biggest legs. After all, it's an upper body business. But even saying that would be missing the point. You see, building muscles isn't the priority here. I would even go as far as to call it an afterthought. The goal of pro wrestling training, first and foremost, is to develop tenacity. This means both cardiovascular and muscular endurance, plus the ability of the mind to withstand tremendous amounts of punishment and fatigue without the body shutting down completely as a defense mechanism. It is also the reason why the training looks so impossible. It's supposed to be. It exists as a hyperbole to express the immense amount of stress and hardship that must be endured if you want to transform yourself. And since Sekibayashi is a manga character, it is only fitting that his workouts would be so insane. This essentially means that when it comes to pure hypertrophy, I simply cannot recommend you train that way. There are so many better ways for someone to put on muscles without having to spend 10 hours in the gym. Check out the routine I modeled after backhand mass training for a much more realistic resistance training program based on calisthenics. The link will be in the description. This doesn't mean we're done discussing Sekibayashi's pro wrestling workout, however, as there is still some things to be said. In truth, it's not like this training routine is entirely delusional or manufactured. Pro wrestlers are known for having extremely strict and rigorous training regimen. All in all, there is something to be said about ignoring the scientific methods and just relying on your guts. And for a lot of novices and aspiring lifters, that's really what they'll be missing when they get started. Even though experiencing hardship right off the bat can be discouraging, it also means that whoever makes it through those first few years of pure suck will have a much easier time staying in the game and making consistent progress. For Sekibayashi and other pro wrestling recruits, they'll have their trainers to thank for all of the grueling hours of training they'll be putting in every day. Getting beat up with a cane and having someone sit on your abs as you perform a neck bridge is a surefire way to ensure that you stick to it long enough to see good results. But for you, who trains at home or at the gym without a trainer, this isn't a realistic environment to expect or reproduce. The good thing is that you can replicate the same exact work ethic without anyone's help, simply through the power of the mind. A big part of pulling that off is training every day. While this is certainly not the most optimal way to pack on muscles, nor the most convenient, it is sure to instill a strong sense of discipline in you that will never leave as long as you keep fueling it with work. By making lifting a part of your daily schedule, you remove the possibility of skipping it. Do you often skip lunch? Or sleep? No. Why? Because it is a part of the schedule that dictates your life. This is what Sekibayashi has done going so far as to promise his mentor that he wouldn't even skip a day to attend his funeral. This is an insane mindset, but also the type of mental fortitude that you will need to develop if you want to build a big body. That, much more than the training, is what changes people. Accepting that you will be working on your body now and for the rest of your existence is the type of life-altering realization that creates greatness. And so when Sekibayashi is faced with a person that has lost sight of that gift, he knows exactly what to do. He, who went from being an incredibly arrogant teen to having his confidence crushed by overwhelming strength, and then restored by the very same man that destroyed it via hellish training, knows a lot about eating rock bottom. The moral of that episode, and really the reason why I think the author of King and Ashura included that little window into pro wrestling training, was really to convey that message. Anyone can change. What you do during the training isn't the most important aspect of it. The key is just to do it. 
by surrendering yourself entirely to the craft, even if it might not be entirely optimal, you are allowing yourself to be changed by it. I think this offers a pretty good counter-argument to the video I made about Jack Anma's training that you can check out in the description. Sekibayashi, who was a delinquent with no directions in life, was saved and changed by pro wrestling training. It not only gave him something to strive for, but also connected him with like-minded people who happily mentored him throughout his evolution. And so, he feels very confident telling another young man that he too can change, because he went through the exact same process. And so this is what I will be closing this anime walkout episode with. You can change too. I'm sure that you can. The only thing there is to it, is to do it. Yeah, look at this. It'll be a gorilla press. Oh, 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 o